Hi everybody, Matty here from BDC TV. Uh, we've got a fantastic episode of On The Sofa coming up, but before we do, I'm gonna ask you to please check out all of our social media. You can find all the links in the description below. Please check out our YouTube channel, BDC TV, and if you could find a minute to subscribe, it will mean that you don't miss any of the fantastic content that we've got coming up. So that would be fantastic, so thank you. On to today's guest, we have the fabulous Darby Todd on the sofa. How are you doing, mate? I'm good, how are you? I'm very well, it's good to see you. Yeah, we finally made it. Well, yeah, we're, we're here and uh, we're on these- In person? Th yeah, on these very sumptuous sofas. Are you comfortable over uh, there? I'm, I'm, I presume I look leisurely you right do. now. So, yeah, yeah, indeed. Well, look, today is a good day. I mean, you've, you, you've come here today. We're in the factory. I know this yep. doesn't look like we're in the factory, but we are. Um, and it's new drum day for you. No better day than New Drum Day. I am very excited. Yeah. Do you know what? You, you know, you've, done, you've played on some of the biggest stages with the biggest artists on all sorts of drums, but is it still the same at this point in your career when yeah. you're getting a new kit? Come on, of course it is. Yeah. Yeah. Love, love drum. It, it's, um, I think, us drummers, we're just naturally drum geeks, aren't we? Yeah. You know, you know two o'clock in the morning, scrolling through YouTube, looking at drums. It's, it's yeah, it's... You can't not be excited yeah. by new drums. It's not just me then. No, no, it's it's me and you and uh, I'm sure most of the people watching. Yeah, this. yeah. Oh, that's good to know. You know, after you know, you've done you've done an awful lot over your. I mean, I'm, you're not an old man by any means. You oh, know? well, thank you. I'm glad yeah. you noticed that. <laughs> but you know, you've done you've done more drumming than most people. Yeah. You do more gigs than you know. Yeah, it's it's been pretty busy. It's yeah. been pretty busy, and I, I wouldn't really have it any other way. You know, I think I think as drummers, we like playing drums. Yeah. So. Uh, you know, working all the time uh, means you get to play drums all the time. So, Absolutely. Uh, yeah, it's cool. So we're, we're here in the factory, and I've had a sneaky peek at your beautiful drum set there. Yeah. Now, um, for the for the people watching, what have you got? So I have um, my first of two drum kits uh, coming today. I say coming today. I might have seen some of it last night. but um, You might have used some of it last I night. I might have even used it last night, but only a very small part because yeah. it's a very big kit. Um, so, yeah, I've got my first kit uh, properly today, uh, which is a Legend kit mm -hmm. uh, in a finish that I think you're pretty familiar with. I love this finish. Because it's the same finish you own, uh, Ravenglass, uh, which uh, is absolutely stunning. Mm. Uh, absolutely stunning. I was kind of, uh, when we were planning what kit I was going to, going to have, you know, it's kind of like you can have any colour you want and um, I kind of, uh, the cogs in my head started going, I was like, oh, I could, you know, have this colour or this, or I could do something, you know, it's kind of like every every young drummer's fantasy to just sort of make that dream kit. Sure. And um, my second kit that uh, we're still working on the colours and stuff, that that will be something that's not completely off the shelf, mm -hmm. but I kind of realised that if, if I'm going to play a new brand and do something like that, it would be good to actually play a finish that's, you know, available to everyone so yeah. that, you know, cause you, you do, it's the amount of times you do shows and you get like a message on social media afterwards, you know, saying, Oh, I loved your kit. What was that color? Or what was it? And you, if you suddenly go and, Oh yeah, sorry, it's a custom job, mate. You can't actually get that. It, yeah. it, it, it seems a bit sort of like cheating people almost. So, uh, yeah, I went through all the finishes and went through, um, absolute anguish in terms of what I was going to choose. <laughs> uh, and I can't, I think I'd nailed it down to the white Haven, or the Ravenglass, and yeah, uh, yeah in the end, uh, Ravenglass all the way. Uh, the Ravenglass for me, as soon as I saw it, I knew that was the yeah. one. And it's it just looks, un and under stage lights, how good does it look? Oh, it looks amazing. I mean, the the show we, we had last night, they had like lasers and all, all sorts of random stuff, and yeah. it, it the kit went from one minute just looking like nice black sparkle, then all, all the colors come mm. out. Yeah, it was, you know, it, it seems bizarre. You think that like talking about a drum kit, you just want to go, ah, oh, sounds amazing. Or the floor sounds like this, or the snare sounds like this. But when you've got something that looks that good, it, it's like, it, it raises discussion, you know? I had people uh, coming up to me just going, oh, it looks amazing. And I'm like, yeah, it does, it does. I was going to say, did you get did you get complimented on it? Because obviously it was your first time out with it. Yeah. I know you've, you've used yeah. some snares for the last few months, but, yep. but actually getting the whole kit together, it's, oh, it's having special, the whole it? having the whole thing there um, was yeah, it was it was cool. And uh, you know, you, you know, gear, we all know the gear is good. You know, you, you only have to listen to the the examples or you, you know, come in the showroom mm. here and hit a drum or watch them being made. You know, it's going to be great. But it's only when you get on that stage and, and properly hit your drums, it's like, wow, yeah. you know, and 
I'm I'm the first person. I'm so honest about everything. If I, if I hit something and thought, oh, that's substandard, mm. I'd speak my mind. And I I was I knew it was going to be great, and I was blown away even more than that. So uh, sound engineer happy as well. Loved it. Yeah. Everyone loved it. Um, band members loved it. Uh, sound guy really loved it. And what was interesting actually, it was a, a very big room last night, and so it was quite a difficult sound. Mm. Uh, in the room and uh, the drum still cut and sounded yeah. full and, and yeah, yeah. It's, it is, I, I always feel it's like hitting, being allowed to hit furniture though with, with the BBC yeah. stuff because it's yeah. so beautiful inside and out. Oh dude, I was, I was sitting there last night on stage and you know, I've got, I, I always like using clear heads on my mm -hmm. drums and um, w one of the reasons is I just like to be able to see through my yeah. drum. Like when, when you've got, snares a different amount but when you've got a tom head, I, do, I don't know, I just like to see right through it. Mm. And I was on stage last night, just like, and I found myself drifting off the gig, like looking at all the subtle things that are done there, because it, it's one thing to have a drum, but then all those little extra, you know, like the, the little wooden um, washers behind the screws, and then like, wow, they really are engraved like that. Um, yeah, it's, it's crazy. It's be just beautiful stuff, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. You know, and obviously, and I think you've already explained this really well, but you've played other great brands in the past. Of course. Uh, but you've, you've, you've come to BDC, yeah. What was the, the reasoning for that? Was it? Was it? I was. I, don't know. I was. I, I don't know. I was. I was looking for uh, just something new, something to inspire me, and mm. uh, and uh, you know, I've, I've been working a lot over the past few years, and with the work that's coming up uh, over the next year, I was kind of like, you know what? It's time to try something different, and um, you know, I've, it, I've I've had a few other companies on the table that have been, you know, would you? like to check out the drums sure. and in fact the, f the first time I came uh, up to BDC was uh, I had no intention of, of changing drums and uh, we were rehearsing near here for the Devon Townsend tour mm -hmm. and um, uh, Tina, the, your A&R yeah, yeah, yeah. uh, lady, uh, I knew her really well from Zildjian and um, we, we were chatting away and I was suddenly like, didn't you say that um, BDC is like uh, near Manchester. Mm. And she's like, yeah, it's in Stockport. And I thought, got my Google Maps out and I was like, it's only four miles down the road from where I'm rehearsing. So I just sent her a text and I was like, uh, can I go look at the drums? And at that point it wasn't, I want to come to the drum factory and get new drums. It was just, I love drums. Yeah. So, uh, can I see the how they're made? Yeah, yeah, can I just come and be a geek for a, you mm. know, a morning? And I came down and, and I came here with no intention of wanting to shift drums. And I left the building like two hours later, just going, I, I want it's time for a change. Like I want to move. Uh, and I, I, I think it, it was a couple of things. I mean, firstly, you know, like we we we've, we've joked about earlier, we both love drums, uh, and I'm I'm such a geek about it. Like I I love it. It's I'm sure I bore people. You know, I was chatting to a friend of mine the other day. He was like, Oh, have you got a picture of this? And I said, Oh yeah, here. And he's like. Why have you got all these photographs of drums on your phone? It's like, what's that about? You know, yeah, I, yeah. I'm that guy. And what I worked out here when um, they gave me the tour was that a, you know, everyone that works here must have been through that tour five thousand times with you know drummers or just distributors coming in or whatever, and they've had to give that tour a ton of times. And we both know stuff like that gets boring, you know, like explaining the same thing yeah. again and again and again. And every single person on that shop floor loved drums more than I did. Like they yeah. were so into it and no one was kind of like, yeah, okay, so this is how we stick this together and this is how we mark this, this stuff out. You know, everyone absolutely loved it. And I, I just sort of came away going, these are the sort of people that I actually want to hang out with and, yeah. and, and, and work with. And like, that's a hundred percent genuine comment. I know and that, that kind of sounds like, the sort of like sound bite that people just go, oh, I think I'll say this because this all sound good, but 100% genuine, man. It was just like, it was as much about the people as it was about the drums. Well, that's quite a compliment, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, yeah. I mean, you, you, as you walk through the factory, you can see the love and the tension that goes into every- 100%. Every yeah. single little detail is just, you know, just so. Yeah, uh, yeah. And, well, the, the the proof is in the pudding, as you say. Yeah, and I mean, the, even I mean, you know, everything on the shop floor they've made. You know, mm. I like I, I was uh, showing my wife a video the other night of look, this is how they make the drums, and she's like, yeah, okay, whatever. <laughs> and then um, you know, I know it's like even like the rubbish bins have been carved out. <laughs> they put like the little logo and stuff on there, and I, I love stuff like that. It's it's fun. It's uh, it's incredible, yeah. you know, and and it's it's great to have you here, you know. Ah, and, uh, cheers. 
Uh, when are they out next then? Because I think you've got... Did you say you had a gig this week or...? Um, yeah, well, I, I had a show last night, so yeah. I, I used them on that, and they sounded fantastic. Um, I mean, obviously, I'm looking forward to getting back to my studio um, tomorrow and mm -hmm. kind of tuning them up a bit more, you know, exactly yeah. how I like things and, you know, get everything marked out. Sure. Um, I've got a little show in London tomorrow night um, with Alan Price from The Animals. Remember them? Yeah, so, absolutely. Uh, yeah. So a bit of that. And then on Saturday, the truck comes to pick them up. And um, uh, I'm off on tour for a month with uh, Martin Barr, the uh, mm. guitar player from Jethro Tull. Incredible. You've been so, with him a long time, haven't you? Uh, four years. Yeah, four yeah. Four years, yeah. So um, that's that's been a lot of fun. And I mean, that's... Jethro Tull, one of those, you know, anyone that vaguely likes prog music or or sort of that early classic thing. I mean, they're they're responsible for all the yeah. all the bands that you see these days. So to actually get to play those songs with the guy that, mm. you know, was in that band for 50 years is yeah. is pretty cool. So, so you're, are you playing some of Clive Bunker's parts there then? Um yeah, I, well the thing is we we play music from like, you know, that, that this is a band that's gone on for 50 years. Yeah, so yeah. um we uh we, you know, we play everything from like the first album which I think was maybe 1968 right through to some of the uh 90s stuff mm, mm. Um, and you know they went through quite a few drummers yeah. so Clive Bunker was the original yeah, guy yeah. Uh, they had Barry Barlow who was a, a phenomenal drummer because he yeah. did like Thick as a Brick and all yeah. that stuff so I kind of I try try and steal the parts that those guys played that I think yeah. need to be there uh, and at the same time I can kind of stick a bit of myself in there as yeah, well which to... is I think Martin really likes that yeah. mentioning Clive Bunker Clive actually does um, still tours in the band as well oh, okay. so uh, we do double drums uh, which is cool. So, you know, there's like me and Clive up on stage playing Aqualung together with like the drum beats. And uh, it's, yeah, it's, it's cool. That's a it's, fun gig. Yeah, it's a really good gig. So, um, so yeah, a month on the road with that. So, um, uh, yeah, the Raven Glass kit's going to come out on that. Uh, only a small uh, setup. So I'm just going to use, um, I think, 12 inch rack tom, uh, 16 inch floor, and a 22 inch kick. So it's going to be nice to get it through a big PA, though, oh, isn't it? 100%. 100%. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, looking forward to that. Excellent um, stuff. Yeah, it's great. But look, if if we can, look, can we kind of go back to where it started for you, drum wise or music wise, whichever you prefer, sure. whatever came first. How did it? How did it catch fire? Um, I, I, it's kind of a, a. It's not a weird story. It's uh, pretty boring, really. Uh, I I bought a uh, when I was like five in school or six or however old I was. I bought a note home from school saying like, your son can play violin or tuba. You know, sign up for instrument lessons. So I, I went running home and I was like, oh, I didn't want to play tuba. That just didn't seem very cool. Uh, violin, maybe a bit cooler than tuba? Probably not. <laughs> well, so anyway, so I went home and I was like, oh, um, can I play violin? And my, my dad uh, was uh, a New Yorker, you know, an American. Oh, okay. And he's kind of like, you're not going to play violin. That, you know, that sucks. And I was quite, I was like, oh, he's like, just wait a week and I'll, I'll hook you up. And then a week later, I had a pair of drumsticks and a drum pad and started getting drum lessons, and, and that was it. Um, so, yeah, six years old, and wow. uh, and uh, just continued from there, really. So at that period, what, what were you... I mean, six years old, really young. Were you listening to music at that point? Yeah, I was listening to it. It was quite a musical household, so, um, you know, always listening to music and stuff on the radio. Uh, and actually, thinking back, I think maybe I had a bit of an interest in drumming, but didn't know it, because I remember sort of like lining VHS cassettes I've given my age away now haven't I <laughs> lining, I can go back further than that oh yeah worry. I can't I'll stick to VHS <laughs> but like lining things out sort of like banging them with like forks or something or spoons so I, I, I god I yeah. just remembered that I don't know where that came from oh, yeah. so I think maybe there was something in me that always enjoyed you know drumming or percussion or yeah. something yeah um, but yeah it just went from there got my drum lessons and and naturally was pretty good at it you know it was never a struggle for me yeah uh and yeah just kept going and what was the first kit can you remember my first kit was a premier apk oh lovely yeah. yeah i think it had a 24 inch bass drum as well <sighs> and it was probably like massive power sizes as then so it's probably like 12 by 12 13 Square by times. 30 yeah yeah, yeah. Like, like huge so um but i was i had a little i only had a practice pad for like the first year so i just sort of do my drum lessons yeah. and you know play on that so were you um, were you like learning to read at an early age or uh, not massively? I mean, yeah. I think all teachers kind of get you doing a little bit of reading because mm. uh, I think at the time, what was the drum book I was working out of? Um, Wasn't the John Savage one? Was it? No, I think it might have been Lloyd Ryan. Oh right, okay. do you remember that book? I forget what it was called. I vaguely remember. Yeah, it. yeah. So you know, just sort of like. 
get working on like eights and sixteenths and that yeah. sort of thing. So yeah, basic level reading, but not not massive. It's a good grounding yeah. to have, isn't it? So I'm guessing you were out, how soon before you were out gigging and you know of joining a band, I say, rather than gigging. So I I was kind of like in a little band when I was about eleven mm. or twelve, but then I was playing with guys that were like sort of sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. Mm. Um, Never did any gigs. We just sort of played in a village hall and had a laugh and, um, you know, they'd sort of, you know, do their thing. And I was a bit young for that. Yeah. Uh, and then maybe when I was about 16, I was kind of in my first proper band where we thought, yeah, we might make it. We're great. <laughs> um, and then um, obviously that didn't do anything. And then I, I finished school. And so when I was 18, moved um, into London. Yeah. And just started trying to be a drummer and just started meeting people and playing. And, you know, all that time I was always practicing a ton. You know, yeah, I, yeah. I was always very sort of um, diligent in trying to be as good as I could be, mm. you know, rather than just going, oh, I can play some drum beats, that's it. I always wanted to try and pursue that, you know, that top end of drumming or, or get as close to it sure. as I can. And I'm still trying to do that today. Yeah. Uh, well, you know, I don't think we stop. At, at this point then, so... What are you listening to now? Are you, are you into like the progressive stuff or the metal or progressive metal, whichever? I like everything. I've unfortunately this year, I've been, because I've been jumping from gig to gig, mm. all my time, all my musical listening has been learning music. Yeah. So um, I haven't had so much time to enjoy it. But yeah, I, I listen to everything. You know, I, I love my metal, but at the same time, I love my jazz. You know, and I, I grew up. You know, like my the main drummers I loved were. Dave Weckl, Simon Phillips, yeah. Dennis Chambers, Greg Bissonette, you know, those those were the, um, you know, people like Jeff Picora as well, yeah. but those those were the four main yeah, guys sure. that I liked. So I would even say that today I think you can definitely hear all of those four influences yeah. in my playing. They're, they're definitely kind of what has made where I am today. Yeah, and, and I think from what you've just said as well, it shows in your playing, you're a bit of a musical chameleon. You kind yeah. of fit in. Yeah. Uh, the first time I was aware of your playing was um, a video that our, our mate Ian Palmer shared, and it was Protect the Beat. All right, yeah, yeah. I can't remember where it was, but... And I, Probably I, a I, jazz club in London or and something. And I remember just being blown away. I was like, yeah. who's this guy? Yeah. Uh, so that was... And, and there's all sorts of... You can't pigeonhole what that band does. Is that still a thing, is it? It is still a thing. The The problem is everyone's so busy. Yeah. You know, Winston, the bass player, plays a massive attack, so mm. they're always out. Uh, Tim, the guitarist, has, you know, played in the Bee Gees for the last 15 years, so mm. he's out with the uh, the the remaining guy, and they, they play a lot. And, yeah. Uh, yeah, everyone, Derek's in Jules Holland's band, so mm. everyone's always busy. So when we are around, we try and get a gig in every yeah. once in a while, but it's it's very difficult. I mean, we started our third album, Five years ago, we still haven't finished it because <laughs> there's no time. Yeah. Um, but um, yeah, so we, we still play when mm. we can. Oh, that's um, good. But that's uh, good. hopefully more soon. But, you know, the, the, the point I was making was you, you, you fit in musically to wherever you yeah. need to. Yeah. Uh, and, and that's what I spent my life doing, though. So yeah. I, I never wanted to just be a drummer that, you know, oh, I, I play a specific style and I'm in this band and... and now that band's broken up and I can't do anything else, there's no place for me. I always wanted to be able to do every every style and yeah. every every little thing, uh, and uh, and it's it's fun. I wouldn't have it any other way. You know, it's uh, it's, it's kind of crazy. Some of the gigs I jump between. You know, one night I'm doing this, the next night, <laughs> night I'm doing that. It's uh, it's bizarre. Mission accomplished, yeah. I reckon. Yeah, but you know, as you got older, I know. Um, that you had some heavyweight teachers as well. Yeah, you 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 uh, you were with Colin Woolway, weren't you? Yeah, Colin, for... another British drum company artist. Yeah, indeed, yeah. indeed. Yeah, and and uh, it's funny actually because there's a load of guys that I saw playing um, BDC, and they they kind of. I, I feel like a bit of inception was going on. It was like they're always <laughs> dropping hints in the back of my head about their drums. So I think that's maybe why I came to Stockport. I was like, oh, can I come down the Subliminal. Uh... Yeah, yeah, completely. <laughs> but yeah, so Colin, I, before that was a guy called Bill Collis, okay. who um, was based in Chiswick in London. Uh, and, and he saw him. Then I moved to Colin and I was with Colin for maybe six years. Great educator. Oh, fantastic. Yeah, uh, yeah he's definitely responsible for... Uh, mm a lot of the, the damage I've inflicted on people's <laughs> eardrums. Uh, and then Thomas Lang, I studied with for a couple of years. Definitely um, a heavyweight. Yeah, really. Um, yeah, he's definitely responsible for a, a large element in my sound, I think. And I, I used to go to his house sort of once every couple of weeks in London mm. and, and, and have lessons with him. And uh, yeah, he really 
<laughs> really tortured me in a good way. Yeah, I was going to say, would you be the player you are today without having no. those, those no. lessons with those guys? No, I don't think so. Yeah. Um, and I also wouldn't be the player I am today without studying the people that I loved, the drummers mm. that I loved. Yeah. Um, and like even today, I, I still do that. You know, I, I constantly, not necessarily discover new drummers, but sort of check out drummers that uh, I've always been aware of, but never really delved into what they do. Like for me now, Vinnie Colliuta is just the man. Like I, I spend my time dissecting everything yeah. he does, and I've, I've learned so much from that. And, you know, a couple of years ago, I was heavily into Virgil Donati and kind of breaking down his stuff and stealing yeah. that. So kind of like the more you take from people, the more you add to your, your bow. You know, Absolutely. And, and to the, the, the locker. Well, I know over the, the dark times of COVID, I don't like mm -hmm. to mention the C word, but, you know, <laughs> it's hopefully taking a back seat now. Yeah. You, most people were sitting watching Netflix or whatever, yeah. other subscription. I did a bit of that. I, did a, well, I definitely did a bit of that. But, yeah, I don't know when, because you were Mr. Social Media, just, you, you come up with the most insane project, didn't you, over lockdown? Yeah. Well, we, we were, I was on tour in South America with Martin Barr, and um, mm. even when we left, uh, we, I think we, we left on March 3rd, and, you know, it's just starting to sort of bubble under that, yeah. you know, things were going south. And then we were about two and a half weeks in the tour, and suddenly it was like, we need to fly home on 24 hours notice, or we're going to be stuck in Peru. Um, <laughs> was it Peru? Um, no, Chile. Okay. Chile. So um, we, we got out of the country, got back, and... And we kind of, I think everyone just thought, oh, it's, it'll be a month and a half yeah. off and then we'll, we'll be back out. And then it was clear, you know, tours started getting cancelled. Uh, and I just thought, you know what, I've always dreamt of like making my own record. Um, and I'm like, I've never had time to do it because I'm always, you know, touring, recording for other yeah. people doing this. And I went, I'm just going to make an album. You know, I'm, 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 I'm very lucky that I've got my own studio and my own setup and my recording yeah. stuff. And I can do that because I'm very aware, you know, drums is not the easiest uh, no, no. thing to play. So, yeah, I was lucky I, I had the space to do that. Just started making a record. And what what I thought I'd just knock up in two weeks for a bit of fun ended up becoming this mammoth project that took 10 months to complete. Um, and uh, I just started, like, phoning and texting music friends that I'd either toured with or become really good friends with. You know, suddenly I, I had an album with, you know, Justin Hawkins from The Darkness, Don Airy from Deep Purple, Bumblefoot from Guns N' Roses, Pear Nilsson from Meshuggah, you know, all these, Carl Verheyen from Supertramp, yeah. um, all these amazing musicians. And I just sort of texted them and I was like, do you want to play on my record? And they all said, yeah, why not? Obviously, we were talking about Vinny. Yeah. Uh, the opening track is a classic oh. slab of Vinny. Yeah. I remember hearing that when I was about 10 years old. Yeah. And I was like, what is that? But given a major kick up the backside in heaviness. Yeah. Um, well, I, I was like... I'm good. tweaked is, is the tune in, in yeah. Attack of the 20 Pound Pizza. 20, yeah, yeah, 20 Pound Pizza. Bizarrest name tune, but... Yeah. Um, I, I was just like, you know what? I need to cover that song or mm. at least attempt to cover it and, and see if it will work or not. It worked. Um, <laughs> and uh, yeah, I think I, I definitely... Um, uh, embellished it, mm. um, and um, it, it's it's a heavier tune. I mean, again, there's some heavyweight players on that. That's got like Matthias Eklund on guitar from Freak Kitchen, yeah. Charlie on guitar from Haken, a um, bunch of other dudes. Um, but um, in, in making the song, obviously, you want to pay tribute to the actual song, yeah. but a bit like I do with the Jethro Tull thing, I want to put my own little slant on it. So while I do kind of steel parts that Vinny's done, I sort of interdisperse my own thing on it as well. Definitely your own footprint on there, or thumbprint, whichever way you look yeah. at it. But it's, uh, has it been well received? Um, the, I mean, the album, yeah, has yeah. been greatly received. Great I've, I've not particularly said to anyone, oh, what do you think of that cover mm. of that particular song? But I mean, I've got to say, I, I think it, it was a brave choice to try. Yeah. And, um, you know, there could have always been the possibility I would have recorded it in the end and just gone, don't do it. Don't, you know, stick it in the bin. But I, I'm really proud of that song. I think it sounds great. It's, it's great. The whole album's great. Thanks, it's, man. It's a mixture of covers and, and originals. Yeah. There, isn't it? Yeah. Isn't yeah. 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 Four covers, four originals. Yeah. Um, and uh, I mean, yeah, like the final song on the record, um, which was uh, done by uh, me and myself and a bass player I work with, Dave Marks. You know, we started working on that song 10 years ago and it's oh, just wow, kind of realize. slowly do a bit more work and it morphs into something else and it regresses, morphs, regresses. And then eventually we just finished it off. But I mean, that, that particular song, I think, has about 165 tracks of audio in it. 
and no vocals. So oh, wow. not obviously not all going on yeah, at once, yeah. but I mean that's a that's a hell of a lot of stuff going on there. So my friend Jake in Sweden who mixed that, I, I was like, I'm really sorry, mate. Can you make it work? So you've literally got stems going back and forth, back and forth, hundred percent. And in fact, because of COVID, it, it, I kind of had to do the whole thing a little bit backwards. Mm. Um, so you know, normally I'd want to go in a room with musicians or do something, but you know, no one can leave their mm. houses. So what I'd, I do. Um, especially for the covers, because the originals, I kind of had some scratch tracks from demoing mm -hmm. from, from before. So, uh, for instance, I did, I did a cover of a, a Tony Williams tune that I loved um, off the Believe It album. And uh, so I dragged it into Logic and realized that they didn't record with a click and actually the tempo's all over the shot on that. So what I did was kind of um, time stretched it and, and got it into time and all of that. And then did some demo drums, which I played against the, um, the, the track. And then uh, sent it off to a couple of guys to like the bass player and, and the keyboard player just to get some rough chords down to build it up. Mm. And then once I'd got all the rough stuff in place, I then went back, re-recorded the drums properly again to all those guys, then sent it off and got everyone to layer their stuff up over it. So you must have repeat so, the process twice. twice. Yeah, um, but it was the only. It's not yeah. how I wanted to do it. No, but it was. Uh, That's an insane amount of work, work, isn't it? Yeah, it's That's the only way to make it work. Wow. So, um, so yeah, did that. And um, um, what I'm really proud of, though, is that it sounds like we're all in the room together. Yeah, you know, you, you wouldn't know that, you know, one person was in one part of the country, yeah. one person was in Sweden, you know, stuff like that. So it's cool. And does it help on something like that that you've worked together before, do you think? Well, yeah. Um, not everyone on there I had worked oh, together. Okay. Some people are just new. All oh, right. Um, so, uh, but yeah, I, I think the key to the project was picking the right musicians mm. for the right songs. Uh, and I think that's what really made it come to life you know yeah. it's like just because you know uh, a great rock guitar player doesn't mean he's going to be the best guy to play on your you know your funk song or something yeah sure so um yeah picking picking the the best musicians for the best songs i think mm. really made that come to life but yeah i'm certainly proud of it would i do it again mm, maybe not <laughs> It was uh, 10 very long months of my life. Loved every second of it, but... Uh, In the next pandemic, maybe. No, I'm joking. No, no, I'm joking. Don't, don't say it. <laughs> don't say it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, but no. No, uh, amazing. Great album, man. Thanks, man. R rightly so to be proud of. Yeah, um, I am. I am. Now, there's, there's, there's a gig we have to talk about, and that is Devin Townsend. Yeah. And, and you got it. Yeah. You know, uh, yeah. it's an amazing story of how it came about. Do you want to... Well, Share I mean, it with it's, us. it's it's possibly a longer story than you even know. So we really bore people okay, now. Okay, good. Um, so I do. Um, I was working in Sweden with a guitar player called Kim Marcello, and uh, who was a guitar player from the rock band Europe. Mm -hmm. You know, like the Final Countdown, all of that. So um, played drums on his album back in 2016, and um, this guy Matthias Eklund I just mentioned, who now yeah. played on my album, he'd done a guest guitar solo on the uh, the record. And I was always a big fan of Matthias's and his band Freak Kitchen. So uh, after the session, once I heard the album, I just found him on Facebook and I said, oh, hey man, we both played on Key's album. Just great playing, you know, maybe I'll meet you at some point in the future. And I got a message back saying, uh, oh no, man, I'm not uh, that Matthias Eklund, but don't worry, you know, people make that mistake all the time. So I looked at this guy's profile, I was like, well, that doesn't make any sense. Because I thought Matthias Eklund, the guitar player, owned Toon Track, the people that make Superior oh, yeah, yeah. Drummer and yeah. Easy Drummer. And it turned out it was the other Matthias Eklund who I'd, I'd messaged. So it was kind of like a joke. Oh, sorry, man, messaged you by mistake. And um, we, we kind of weirdly just kept in touch a little bit. Um, oh, that was right. Six months later, I, I wanted to buy Superior Drummer. So I sent Matthias a, a message. Just going, oh, hey, man, I'm going to buy Superior Drummer. Does it do this before I buy it? I'd just like to know. I didn't get a reply, so I thought, buy it anyway. And uh, then I sent him a message the next day. So, oh, listen, don't worry about replying. It does exactly what I hoped it would do. It's all good. And I got a message a week back later, uh, a week later saying, um, oh, I'm so sorry I was out of the country in LA or whatever I was doing work in. And uh, he was like, oh, you're, you're playing in Gothenburg. I'm going to be there next week. Uh, let's go hang out. So me and Matthias just became really good friends. And Matthias also happened to be very good friends with Devin Townsend um, right. uh, because uh, Devin does a lot of work with Toontrack as well. And uh, Matthias just randomly um, was chatting to Devin one day um, about a year and a half ago and, and uh, just said, oh, if you ever need a drummer, you should call my friend Darby because Devin's got, uh, you know, uses a lot of different yeah, musicians, sure. likes to work with different people. And uh, so, yeah, Matthias said, oh, you should phone my friend Darby. And uh, Devin said, oh, it's funny you say that. I am looking for a drummer, but I need him to be based in England. Mm. And um, it turned out because Devin was booked to do Bloodstock, yeah. 
Um, but it was just not cost effective to bring over an American band because uh, the band would have to um, quarantine for 10 days on arrival, quarantine for 10 days. And, you know, it's just too expensive. So uh, uh, Dev decided to get an English band. So uh, we got called to do Bloodstock in 2021. We headlined that. This is one of the first festivals uh, yeah. sort of post-COVID, wasn't yeah. it? So, yeah, yeah it's still pretty strict. Yeah, so, um, so, so, yeah, so I got called for that. Uh, and I mean, you know, thinking about it, you know, Devin took a real chance kind of, obviously he checked us out on the internet and he, he phoned me and he's like, wow, I really dig your playing. Do you want to do the gig? But it's still, it's still a big chance to kind of put that into your own hands. Cause you know, yeah. the amount of time you, you see something on the internet and maybe it's a bit more corrected than you expect. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. um, so yeah, so he, he booked an all English band, which was me, uh, this guitarist Steve from Manchester and, uh, James Leach on bass mm. who, uh, is from uh, the band Sixth. Oh yeah, I, don't yeah. Know, I was a massive Sixth fan. So suddenly being in a band with him, I was like, oh, this is you know extra cool. I'm playing yeah. with Devon Townsend. The funny thing is, I first saw Devon Townsend play with Steve Vai like when I was really young, when I was a Sex kid. And religion. I saw that tour. Oh, great yeah, album! So yeah. to suddenly be in his band. So uh, so yeah, so he called us and we did the gig and it was great and we all got on. And then about two weeks later, I got another call from Devon. He's like, oh, um, I'm doing my new album, Light Work. Uh, Morgan Agram was meant to play drums mm. on it, um, but because of the pandemic, uh, he couldn't get into Canada to do the record. And um, I've got an American passport as well as an English one. Okay. So um, so Devin said, um, Americans get, can get into the country. Do you want to do the record? And I was like, yeah, why not? No brainer. So uh, it ended up, you know, he was like, can you get to Vancouver in three days? So uh, flew over. Uh, recorded that album um, with Dev, and then uh, that was produced by Garth Richardson, who had done like uh, um, the first Rage Against the Machine mm. album and a whole host of really cool stuff. Sure. So um, yeah, so suddenly I was on Devon's new record, um, wow. and then um, and then about a month later, I got another call saying um, I've got a, uh, a couple of headline shows in London, we, uh, two nights at the Albert Hall, and uh, and then a three month tour with Dream Theater. Um, with Mike Mangini yeah, on drums, yeah. and then um, a bunch of festivals. Do you want to do those? And I was like, yes, please. So, uh, so yeah, it's, it just seems to have gone from one small thing to the next, to the next, to the next. Incredible. So your feet are well under the table. Yeah, now, right? yeah. Ah, that's good. I mean, yeah. the new album is stunning. That fella can write an anthem, can't he? He really, really can. can. Yeah, just, yeah, he really can. Mind blowing. Um, I mean, let, let's just go back a little bit to to. to to Bloodstock, yeah. Um, there was very little rehearsal involved in that, wasn't there? We had, I think, a day and a half rehearsal for that. For um, Devin Townsend, that's not yeah, much. Yeah, I mean, it? it's it's not an easy gig, but no. I think it gets to a level where you've you've got good professional musicians. You get told what you need to learn. I had about a month. I had about six weeks to learn the mm. set. Um, so, it was just in my studio, absolutely thrashing it. And you know, a couple of those songs are a little bit out of my comfort zone. I'm mm. a rock drummer, but I don't necessarily do you know all those massive blast beats and bass drums for long periods of time yeah. at 200 BPM. So, you know, I had to do a lot of work to kind of raise my game and uh, get that level of chops sure. up. Um, so it was a challenge for me. It was more about not just learning those songs, but actually being able to mm. play some of them. Um, Were you, did you learn them as in, learn them as in having, having them in here or did you chart any of them uh, out? How did you go Whenever about Whenever I get a gig, the, uh, the, the way I will always learn stuff is, um, chart it out in Spalius, note for note, or not quite note for note, you know, where it needs to be note for note, yeah. and then, you know, things that are just this groove for eight bars, I kind of yeah. I kind of leave it. And I find normally by the time I've done that, I sort of 90% know the song. Mm. So when I'm practicing in the studio, I, I'll play the song from my head, and if I sort of go, oh God, what's the next section? I can have a little peek at my iPad where I put all the yeah. charts and go, oh, it's that. Um, and actually, I think that's, that's quite a, an important piece of advice, really, because, uh, learning songs, you know, we don't necessarily have the time to sit there and listen to one song mm. 15 times to learn it. That's that's not a good use of time management. No, no, no. So for me, writing them out, and I can score things out pretty quickly, you know, learning them that way just absolutely speeds up the process. Yeah. So there was no, um, it's like a safety blanket, isn't it? In, in yeah, yeah, but I didn't have it on stage. But that's I what I was gonna have, say, no, did nah, you? Can't do that. Uh, I had it there during rehearsals just yeah. in case I needed to have a peek, but you know, if if you, even on a day and a half's rehearsal, if you can't remember it and you've had six weeks on your own, you shouldn't have the game. Yeah, yeah, that's a fair comment, yeah. fair comment. Do you know, I, I ask this question a lot 
and or, or I, it's not really a question, but if you imagine back to fourteen-year-old Derby, you know, oh, yeah, and, and, yeah. and if you'd have thought in however many years' time you're going to be doing this touring with, you know, these incredible names, what what, what would you have thought at that point? Oh, I, I, I would I would have gone. That's that's the best thing in the world, and yeah. it is the best thing in the yeah. world. Yeah, and I, I think another way to look at it actually is if tomorrow. I had to stop playing drums or just it's time to stop for mm. whatever reason. I could look back on everything I've done and say everything I ever dreamt about doing as a kid, mm. drumming wise and music wise, I've achieved, you know. There's and a lot to be said for that. That's cool, you know, from, from you know, being in recording studios, headlining festivals to 50,000 yeah. people, play, meeting famous musicians that you you like, mm. um, you know, touring on tour buses, getting on planes, you know, all... Talking to uh, me today. To, uh, well, yeah. I shouldn't yeah. have had to prompt you there, but it's all right, we're okay, I'm it's all right. All right. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm just trying to stay composed, you know. So I've, I've left this little extra bit yeah. of space just so don't get too excited. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, you're right. And and like and another thing is like, being, being fans of certain drummers as a kid that you listened to their music and checked them out and, you know, now I can just send them a text message and go, all right, how you doing? What have you been up to this weekend? Oh, hanging out with the family, cool. You know, that fries my head. It's amazing. Absolutely it? um, fries my head. And um, I think that's the, the other thing I've really loved about doing festival season is that we play these massive shows. That's cool in itself. But the other thing is I'm suddenly hanging out watching bands that I love from the side of the stage. Amazing. And sitting backstage, chatting to bands that I've loved as a kid and realizing most of them are really, really cool. You know, it's, it's, I yeah, s- it's, it's pretty mad. It's pretty it's mad. The, it's, it's, the, it's, the, it's the dream, isn't it? It mm. really is living the dream. Indeed, yeah. Amazing, now you've got this beautiful drum set to take oh, around I'm and show so off. Ex- and... I'm so excited. Incredible. Yeah. So you've got, I think you touring with Devon next year yep. as well? Yeah, I've got more in the book with Devon, so that's going to yeah. be fun. Um, and that's part of the reason this uh, this new kit is the sizes Monster and the kit. shape. And yeah. uh, I mean, I, 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 I'm, I'm very much a drummer that will bring the drums required for the gig. Course, yeah. So, you know, um, you know if, if a gig requires one rack, one floor, brilliant. Uh, if the gig requires a ton of stuff, um, and a gong drum. Yeah. And a gong drum. <laughs> well, uh, so I was, uh, when I was getting this kit, I was kind of like, do I use two bass drums? You know, would that be cool? Because obviously I play mm. double pedal. And um, the kit I used on the last tour, you know, it looked really cool and everything, but I went, just, it could look a bit more rock and roll. So I, I text Devin and I was like, I'm just sorting my kit out for the tour. What's your view on two bass drums? Is it overkill? And I got a text back five minutes later going, yeah, it is a bit overkill. And I was sat in there, I was like, yeah, it's probably right. And then I get another text about 30 seconds later going, but I love Overkill. <laughs> so I was like, yeah, it's done. So I'm that is a that. second bass drum. So yeah. So, I mean, uh, do, do you, are you more comfortable on a double pedal or? I don't care. You, do, does I it don't feel, care. it must feel a little different. I think, I think the biggest thing with using a uh, double bass drum is where everything else fits. Yeah, so yeah, your that. snare drum is maybe slightly more to the right mm-hmm. if you're a right handed drummer than it would be if you were on a single bass drum. But mm. I mean, naturally it's like, sometimes I look down at my feet, you know, I'm, I'm, I've got like duck feet. They like point out that way when I'm sitting down. So you, you think about it naturally, bass drum actually probably is more ergonomically correct to be yeah. to be to the right. Um, so, uh, so yeah, I'm gonna have to spend some time, you know, getting the set up yeah, with sure. my drum tech and, and making sure I'm happy. Nice problem but, to have uh, though, isn't it? Yeah. Do yeah. you enjoy, I mean, I, I'm sure you enjoy that bit of it as well don't you just fine tuning it and oh love it's it fun isn't it it's love not, it it's not a chore no no what i don't love or what i really love is the fact that i don't have to get my hands and knees and try and mark out with gaffer tape on the floor yeah, yeah. don't miss that no, but yeah sure. getting everything just so is is fantastic yeah. it's like yesterday keith was showing me some of the the casino hardware and he's like oh so check this out and it does this and then he said to me you know it's a bit awkward the first time you set it up because you know you have to get it exactly as you want it and then put this memory lock here and get it all set up. But once it's done, I'm like, that's, that's the point of anything. You know, you spend your time and get it perfect. But what you want to know is at the end of the day, once you've got it perfect, it always goes back to that position yeah. and it's always exactly where it's meant to be. Yeah, it's, it's tricky the first time and then it's, it just falls into place the second time. Like, like most things. So. Yeah, absolutely. So the future's looking rosy then? Yeah, I guess so. That's all I guess good. So. That's all um, good. You know, it, it's, it's like anything. I've been very fortunate that I've worked a ton over the the past decade and and now is no exception. I mean, this year 
I did three months in America with Martin Barr and doing the Jethro Tull thing with Clive Bunker. Yeah. I was home for four days, went out with uh, Devon for three months, was home for a week, went to Canada for three weeks to do more Martin Barr. And then I've had a, you know, a few festival runs mm. and all that stuff and back to Europe for a month. So it, it's been really full on. There hasn't been a whole lot of time home, but um, it's it's cool. But I'm, I'm very aware that just because things are great now doesn't mean... You know, next year or the year after that, things might change and be a bit, a bit slower. That's the nature of being a, yeah. a freelance musician. But do you not find that the more names you have on your CV and the bigger the names, the gigs will come a little easier? Yeah, it should li- do. Li- a little bit. I mean, you know, you've. I, th- I think ultimately you've you've got to try and be the best you can be at whatever it is you do, whether it's just playing one style of music or everything. Yeah. I, I, you know, we never stop learning. Mm. I, I never stop trying to improve. Um, and uh, I, th- I think, yeah, being good at what you do helps getting called. You know, I, I mean, you know, like Devon, you know, he knows we can play, but so really the biggest decision for him probably is, can he also hang with us? Yeah, yeah. You know, you're stuck on a tour bus going around Europe for, for two and a half, three months. Mm. You know, you, you need to be able to <laughs> get on with people and, and know when to give people their space, know when to have fun, you know, yeah. all that sort of thing. And obviously you just told us about that insane schedule which you've had. Yeah, it, it must be nerve wracking uh, trying to manage your diary as as a very busy drummer. It's when, hard, when dates yeah. come in and you open the book and go, Ooh, "Can I?" Yeah, is it is it like that? Sometimes yeah. you have to say no and yeah, yeah, it can it can be hard. It can definitely be hard. But mm. um, you know, it, it's I kind of you know with Martin and Devon, they're the two main things that I'm doing sure. now, and I'm just so far I'm able to juggle the two of them. Mm. But also, I do a lot of recording from my home studio. Mm. So um, you know, the typical thing people send you their songs, you you record them, send them back. So while I'm away, I can't do that. So yeah. like sometimes when I'm home for two days, I'll have to sort of go through the list, right? How many songs do I have, and try and knock out as much stuff as I can do to catch up. Sure, so sure. yeah, it's hard. Um, I think uh, work home life balance is definitely something. Yeah. I need to improve on. Sure. Um, but, uh, you know, while things are busy and things are good, I just like making good music with mm. good musicians, so it doesn't really matter what it is. So, uh, kind of yeah. sums it up nicely, that, doesn't yeah. it? Good music with good musicians yeah. on great drums as yeah. well. So, yeah. You know. yeah. Darby, look, thanks, mate. It's been an absolute pleasure. You're You've welcome. been a gentleman. Thanks and for having a chat. Hey, it's, it's been a total pleasure. All the best for the tours. Thank you. Coming up. Enjoy the new drums. Um, can't, wait. Yeah. can't wait. Can't so, wait. Uh, so, yeah. Have a great, uh, have a great tour nice one. with Martin in the next month. Yeah. So I hope you've enjoyed this episode of On the Sofa with this wonderful musician. We can call you a musician. I'm a musician. musician. Wow. Yeah, musician. Cool. Uh, Mr. Darby Todd. So don't forget, check out all the social media once again. The links are in the description. Um, check out our YouTube channel, BDC TV. Subscribe, and we will see you next time. Thank you very much for watching.